Senator Cooter, thank you again so very, very much for being with us today. Um, we're all real eager to hear, uh, for those of us that have heard it before, I've got my Kleenex on my desk to take it away. Well, thank you, Cindy. And it's really a pleasure to be here with everyone. Um, what Cindy's referring to is the story of the birth of my daughter and how I became a convert to universal health care. Um, about 28 years ago, uh, my daughter was still born at six months gestation. Uh, she was revived. She weighed one pound, 13 ounces, and she spent uh, five months in the hospital in the NICU. Uh, and during that time, she had three surgeries, uh, one on her heart, one on uh, her eye, and the other to insert a feeding tube um, to save her life. And a lot of the care that she had during um, all of the care she had during her stay at the NICU was life-saving. And, uh, and there were times during her stay there that the insurance company was claiming some of her care was quote unquote experimental. Uh, I am a lawyer and I fought them and they backed down and, I got the, and she got the care that she needed. But I have to believe there were other families in the same situation that we were in that, that didn't have access to legal uh, advice and maybe didn't fight back. Uh, and, you know, that angered me at the time, but I was more concerned about the daily vigil at my daughter's um, incubator. And when I brought her home at five months, uh, she weighed, you know, a little three and a half pounds, roughly. And there was a letter waiting for me when I got there telling me that my daughter, my daughter, who was five months old, had nearly reached her lifetime cap. Now, you know, I've got mother bear instincts to start, but I can assure you that that letter sent me through the roof. And it was at that moment that I realized how bankrupt our healthcare system was and that it really was only for those who had the resources. And as luck would have it, I met a doctor, a pediatric nephrologist during her hospital stay, who also happened to be an author. And one of the things that he wrote on extensively was our broken healthcare system and how it didn't cover everyone in the country. Um, and I read a lot of what he wrote and that did absolutely influence me in terms of um, you know, my view on healthcare in our country. And from that point on, I have been a convert to universal healthcare and it has to be publicly funded. I think the pandemic has shown us that it's foolish to attach healthcare to employment. And so we need to have a system where it's publicly funded and portable for everybody. And I've actually been uh, you know, exploring the possibility of having an interstate healthcare compact with Oregon and California and a federated board that would act as a single payer uh, to, uh, to pay the bills. And, there would, and it would be paid by leveraging Medicaid, uh, a payroll tax and a health tax for starters um, on, employer, on employers. So, the time has come for us to reevaluate our system. You know, there is no other country in the world that has copied what we have. Uh, I described it on the Senate floor as a Frankenstein model where we have different programs for different demographics. And even with all of the demographics that we have, including private healthcare, we still have millions of uninsured people in our country today. We also have thousands of people who die every year from curable diseases. That's not a system that's working. And it's time that we, we move in the direction of universal health, it's long past time, uh, and join the rest of uh, the countries that have seen that this is really one of the best investments we can make in, in our greatest asset in this country, which is the people, our human resources. It's a smart thing to do, and now is the time to do it. So I wanna thank you all for, um, for listening to my story. Um, I will give you some good news. Uh, she is um, she's doing well uh, and she's living on her own, not taking any of my money. So I feel pretty good about that. She is a double major graduate from the University of Denver as well. So we lucked out. I mean, she's got some residual, but we lucked out overall. And But I know that there are other um, babies and people out there who aren't as lucky and didn't have the access to the healthcare resources that we had. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Cindy, and thank you for letting me share my story and my passion for getting universal health care established in our country. Senator Kudera, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, 
really hoping, would love to have you on the Senate Healthcare Committee. I know there's going to be a lot of movement around there, um, but I'm looking forward to having you testify once again um, in support of this bill's love. We've actually talked more about the, um, the tri-state thing. And that's something we've mentioned in the work group, uh, Universal Healthcare Work Group. So thanks again. Really appreciate you being here. And uh, it's going to be a great session. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.